Saint Pope Pius X once said that there is the greatest of all heresies, a false teaching is, in any, any heresy is just a false teaching that's out there. It's what St. Pius X said that the greatest of all heresies, a summation of all of them, a bringing them all together, blowing through the world in our day, he called it, um, and he said it basically, you could sum it up as saying, it is a denial of the supernatural, right? That which is beyond nature, beyond what we can see and observe, and so forth. A denial of that, a denial of the supernatural. And I would say the longer I've been a priest, the more I realize that it is the worst of all heresies, and it does wreak havoc, and it is wreaking havoc in our world. If you think the world is a machine, and everything is determined by chemistry and biology, and that everything that happens in the universe can be calculated, then the problem is this. If you deny that, th that there is things happening beyond what we can see and so forth, if you deny that, there is nothing to be thankful for. There is no gratitude whatsoever. There is, it's all science, right? It's math and physics and genetics and neurons. Everything has an explanation. And even though no one actually has the explanation, most people tell themselves that buy into this, they say, well, there's smarter people that have all of the explanation for everything, or at least people will tell themselves, well, surely someday we will find the things that explain everything, right? One of those two things. As a priest, like, I want to see everyone happy and at peace and to have everyone know and follow Jesus Christ and to find peace in their lives. And so what breaks my heart in this denial of the supernatural is that so many people then tell themselves a monstrously awful thing. People tell themselves today that if they saw a miracle, they would certainly recognize it. I want to say that again. People tell themselves, a lot of people, maybe even people here tonight, tell themselves, if I saw a miracle, I would know it. I would know it. And since people tell themselves that they don't experience any miracles at all, and they don't see anything miraculous that's happening, there's, again, nothing to be thankful for, nothing to have gratitude in our hearts for. So we become a hard and cynical people who rip apart each other online, are lonely and addicted and depressed because nothing miraculous ever happens. We live in a machine. And as I've said before, many things have, have pointed this out. We have young, the young generation, the teenagers right now, are leaving the faith at a previously unseen rate. The average time of departure now from Christianity and Catholicism is 13. And most of them say at age 13 and, or around that time, they're leaving because there is a supposed clash between what we can see and observe in science and what faith is proposing. They believe what science is saying and they believe that that completely invalidates what's happening and what Christianity is proposing and what the church is proposing. I want to say a couple things about that. One of the things I want to say is, I've talked before about the fact that I studied math when I was in college and most of the time I use talking about the fact that I studied math to make fun of myself because most of the time it it shows itself in weird math ways. You become a math nerd, right? But I realized, like, I want to just say something really briefly. If, the, if it might help any teen who is out there or other people that are out there, not just young people, who say that what can be proved by science and the Catholic Church are at odds with one another, right? I want to say that in my math, and again, I'm this, I'm gonna, it sounds like I'm bragging, and I'm not, I'm doing what St. Paul said, which is to just lay out something from his past. I was the calculus student of the year in high school. I know it doesn't matter. I was the math student of the year, my junior and senior year in college. And again, it sounds ridiculous, and I realize some of you are not going to listen anymore because you think that I'm bragging, right? It's absolutely gross to talk about yourself. I don't care. I've never told anyone or bragged in any way about anything that I've done in math. Here's why I'm saying that. I think that my math background, I think that I'm better at math than about 98% of 13-year-olds, which I know that's a really high bar, right? It's a really high bar. But again, the reason I'm saying is St. Paul does the same thing. He says, look, I follow the law better than anybody in the world ever did. But then he uses it just to say and to make a larger point, not to brag him about himself. And I think it's important to say that. Um, my 
I, I, about my science background, I just say this. The reason I bring that up to any 13-year-old or older who's listening who maybe thinks we live in a machine and there's nothing to be impressed about and there is no God or we can't prove God with what we see. I've never seen anything in my math or science background that has ever contradicted anything in my Catholic faith. Ever. What I have on the positive side also, on the other side of that, I've had tons of things that I've seen in my math and science studies that have confirmed and even strengthened my Catholic faith. There's a great interplay between the two. If making a fool of myself talking about college math doesn't help, and it probably doesn't, I reached out to a medical doctor, two people I know who are in med school, the best chemistry brain I've ever seen, and I've asked lots of other Catholic scientists and mathematicians that I know the same questions, and none of them report ever having their Catholic faith challenged by anything in science. And they also report what they have seen in their science and in their studies has strengthened their Catholic faith a great deal. Gratitude comes from realizing we've been given something, that there is such a thing as kindness and love and gifts, and that we have been given a gift. And what is the gift? What is the miracles that we are missing? And I want to share something really briefly. It's one of those amazing things I've seen in a while. It's a video clip, and it's about 90 seconds long. I hope you go watch it. You probably maybe have already seen it. it was CNN host Anderson Cooper was interviewing Stephen Colbert, who is the rare Hollywood person who doesn't brandish his Catholicism, but also doesn't seem to be ashamed of it, which is a nice plus. In the video, between the two, it covered lots of ground. I didn't even see it all. Some of it was apparently about politics. I didn't watch that part. I don't care. Moving on. The video gets to the heart of what we are discussing. It's a beautiful 90 seconds or two minute interview. It gets to the heart of what we're talking about, which is miracles. Gratitude. And whether we have anything to be thankful for at all. Whether anything special ever happens or we're all just chemicals bumping into each other in a machine. Anderson Cooper asks Colbert, and Stephen Colbert lost his father and two brothers in a plane crash. They died when Stephen Colbert was 10 years old. And Cooper, Anderson Cooper, starts to ask Stephen Colbert a question, but Anderson Cooper, as he's asking the question, gets choked up. And the question he gets out through his tears is this. Stephen Colbert, you once told an interviewer to love the things that you love the things you most wish had not happened. You went on to say, what punishments of God are not gifts? Anderson Cooper looks at him just exasperated. Do you really believe that? That even the sufferings and the loss are a gift? And Colbert just beautifully, it's a beautiful interaction between two human people. Colbert pauses, and then he looks up with a smile on his face, and he says, yes. It is a gift to exist. It is a gift to exist. He repeats it a second time as if he's kind of like trying to reconvince himself again. And he says this, with existence comes suffering. There's no escaping that. If you are grateful for your life, you have to be grateful for all of it. And they went on to talk more about suffering and Christ and Catholicism and the church. And it was... In my estimation, the church's teaching on the gift of existence, even in the face of suffering and in the difficulties we encounter, all condensed beautifully into eight minutes. I hope you go watch it. Colbert said in that interview, the key Catholic rebuttal to those who want to strip out mystery, he said, it is a gift to exist. We are grateful, you and I, when we are given gifts, when we recognize that we've been given a gift, and gratitude is what fuels religion. It is what fuels our Catholic faith and our worldview. I'm here tonight because I believe that God has given me many gifts. Some of them I see, but most of them I don't see. Nine people run off tonight in the gospel after being healed from leprosy and don't even think to say thanks. They're healed and then they, from leprosy, it's racked their lives, and an hour later, they don't recognize that the miracle has happened and that there's nothing, they don't recognize that there's anything at all to be thankful for. They move on to the next thing. And many of us do the same. Because we're not asking the right questions. 
And we're not thinking about the miracles that we miss, i.e., that we exist, that we're here, that we're able to experience a million things. We don't necessarily recognize the miracles that are out there, but we experience and live through billions of them a day. No scientist and no math problem has ever proved why we're here, or why we exist, or why there's love, or any of those things, or why it's, there's things that are beautiful. Don't tell yourself, please, please don't tell yourself that if a miracle happened, you would know it. Because a lot of the times we don't. Let us be the Samaritan who sees the miracle of his healing and returns to Christ to say thank you. Let us also say to Christ tonight and always the two words that will totally change our relationship with him and our entire outlook on everything in our life, even in the midst of difficulties. Let us return to Christ and say thank you.